The six persuasion principles for your next presentation. I'm Tatiana Kolovu, and this is the recording of my LinkedIn newsletter called Stronger, finding ways to help you be stronger with your presentations and with any other communication tips and things that you do in the workplace. So I recently returned from taking my MBA students to Athens, Greece, where we do projects with companies and we deliver ideas and strategies and ways for our students to be helpful to the Greek companies. If you own one of them, let me know. So as we delivered and prepared for these project presentations, some of them are happening as early as tomorrow, I was thinking of ways that my uh, ancestors, my Greek philosopher ancestors from 300 BC, the principles on persuasion and influence that they could have that I could teach some of my students. So I came across, um, not just for, for them designing visuals, but also creating relationships and finding ways to understand their audience and finding ways to be able to flex to the style of their audience. In some of my research, I came across the brilliant work of Dr. Robert Cialdini and his colleague, Steve Martin, who do a lot of collection of data and have some incredible research that proves some of these six principles. So I thought I would share them with you and you can see how they relate to your next presentation. The first principle is reciprocity. So that's the pretty much what's in it for your audience to listen to you and why should they care and what do they get? Because sometimes we need to build that relationship in order for the other person to want to hear us out. And in presentation, that applies very much. So it's not just what we give and take, it's what we give. In our case, we do a client portfolio. So beside the presentations that our students deliver, we have another document, it's usually a PDF that's electronic, that is given to the clients and there are step-by-step -step instructions on maybe how to structure their website so they get better hits or what their scheduling could be for their uh, marketing campaigns or maybe some of their operations, how should they be? So that client portfolio includes a lot of that. So if there's a giveaway, it's important for our students in their presentations to mention that, that they're sort of as, as a prize at the end of the way. There's a reciprocity that they're getting something more than even what we said. And in fact, when we make those arrangements in setting up with the companies, we do deliver or we do promise that there is value to beyond just the project that they do. We leave something behind. The second concept is scarcity. Now, this may not apply to all of your presentations, but if there is some type of urgency that your audience needs to act upon, that is more helpful and it will likely create a little bit more of an intention for them to make a decision. When we first create the arrangements with some of our companies and organizations, we do have, we have, we have a timeline. I have to reach out to them probably by the summer, and by the fall, our students start to get involved and our leadership team reaches out to the clients and tries to scope the project because things get started in January. So we don't just leave it completely open. If I want for our clients to decide uh, if they want to join us, I have to create that sense of, of urgency so that there is a decision and that comes with scarcity. So you don't want to always give everything away. If you have a sense of scarcity, in your presentation, you're more likely to get a decision. Maybe it's a no, but maybe it's a yes. The third principle that Cialdini and Steve Martin uh, discuss is authority. And authority means the influential figures or the influential powers of what it is that you're trying to persuade. Usually, we in our projects are asking our clients to do something differently or we're asking them to think about entering a new market and all the strategies that they have to to uh, portray or they have to employ in order to deploy in order to do that. But we're much better off using not just our voice, our research, but using the authority of others, the research that comes from well and highly uh, acclaimed databases or maybe benchmarking with another industry, another company and in another industry that's well known that does it well or maybe a company in their same industry that is ahead of our clients. So that authority figure can come in from how you present your research and that authority can be, if you are doing a presentation next Friday, someone that is a higher up than you tells that audience, 
you just wait and see what Veronica is going to share. You're going to be amazed. So if you get that tap in the back from a higher up, you're much better um, able to be more influential because of that um, because of that principle of authority. Then we have the principle of consistency. And that has to do when you want to be influential and you want to persuade, you need to deliver quality work all of the time. It can't just be a one-time thing. So your action steps need to be specific and you need to not just meet expectations, but exceed them. That's going to be very important in that consistency that you pay close attention. And I mean little details anywhere from your uh, your your visuals and how you present to your pre-meeting agendas and your specifics on the details that you share. You have to have that consistent level of excellence. The fifth principle, which probably is the most important one, is the principle of liking. And why this is important is that this is, is, is based and embedded into personal relationships. And persuasion is really about building trust. And as Cialdini and Martin will say, they remind us, that people like to work with people that they like. So you first have to create that relationship and you first have to take time, as we say in Greek, break bread. Because if you don't spend time going out and spending dinner times and finding out about what people like to do away from work and their hobbies or where they're from or where they studied, quite often we get distracted by wanting to have very action-focused uh, sessions and be working, working. And people think if we're not around the conference room working, we're not doing the work. But the meeting before the meeting that's happening at a taverna uh, where we have a nice dinner or where our client takes us to see ancient monuments, that is also that principle of liking. So I always ask, what should you do to build into that principle for your next presentation? I always even, often even uh, tell our students to to share uh, pictures of them in that specific country where we are to, to demonstrate the appreciation that they have. So finally, uh, the final principle of influence is the principle of consensus. So that relates to decision making and timing and your presentation has a better chance of being accepted if you have a way to share it. In fact, I'm getting on a call in just a little bit because our our students are going to sit down, one or two of them, with the client before the formal presentation so that the client is a little bit more prepared. They know what to expect. And I'm not going to lie, when you're dealing with a different language, I want their eyes on the PowerPoint so they're not surprised or overwhelmed when there's just so many terms and words that are shared. So that is also really important that that consensus that is building is going to be able to uh, to be helpful. Remember the concept of authority. If a person at a higher level of authority says to you, what you're going to hear tomorrow is going to be great. Now, if you get a little bit of an insight of what the highlights are, I'm not telling you to share details, the highlights, you're going to be able to build consensus a lot better. So don't forget that and don't underestimate that. So Steve Martin and uh, his colleague, Robert Cialdini, work in the behavioral science at Columbia Business School. Uh, this behavioral science lab creates a lot of this research and does a lot of executive education. But where I came across uh, Steve Martin's work was in a LinkedIn course that I'm linking in my newsletter called the 10 Essentials of Influence and Persuasion. So there's more principles and they apply to everyday business work and everyday communication that we all share. I found it fascinating and he's delightful. So I thought he's doing and he's talking about some of the research. He cites the studies. They're super interesting. I'm going to reach out to him and I'll ask if he wants to join on a LinkedIn Live. Well, maybe my email was charming. <laughs> maybe the one pager that I sent with some statistics on my newsletter and the lives. And I also shared an example of doing a live with another author. Maybe it was a combination of all of that that helped me be influential or persuasive. But Steve Martin said yes. So on May 11th at 1 p.m., he's joining us on a LinkedIn live session where we talk a lot about these principles and we talk about specific examples or some of the research studies. And Steve will tell us more about where all this came from. So the link is in my newsletter, Stronger. It's the April edition 2023. You can click on, you can join us. And then the recording, if you don't have time for that and you can't make it, the recording will be on my LinkedIn page. I want to thank you for listening to this. I want to 
uh, wish you the best for your next persuasive presentation. And I want to encourage you to not give up, to try to practice some of these principles and to try to learn every single day. Take care. Thanks for watching.